Ari had an exceptionally nice character. He was so inspirational and kind. His office was the most wonderful place. There was just books everywhere on art, on design, on chemistry, on astronomy, everything. It was like going into Harry Croto's brain. He was always so supportive of everyone. He literally would like bounce around when he was teaching. People would really queue up to see his lectures. He was really that exciting. He was one of those people who always did everything to the best of his ability. If he was going to do it, he was going to do it well. The University of Sussex is a school of chemistry and molecular sciences known as MOLS. It was a real hive of activity. People were just following the research with passion. Harry was making molecules in the lab, doing their spectra, and then trying to get colleagues to see if they could be observed in astronomical environments. And this was really the great project that Harry himself was interested in. And then he came across the apparatus that was designed by Rick Smalley in Rice University, which is called the cluster beam apparatus. Harry immediately thought, put carbon in there, maybe we could recreate the chemistry going on in space. He flew over from Sussex University to Texas to work for one week with Rick Smalley and Bob Curl and the students. One thing he always said was, if I knew what the result of an experiment would be, why do it? This cluster beam apparatus you could take a sample and you can use a laser to vaporize the sample. So you have a star, perhaps, in space that's emitting carbon. It'll be very hot, just like in this machine. You fire the laser beam at it, it'll boil off the atoms. So it was a little snapshot of space in the lab with a fantastic machine that could measure all the results. They did this amazing experiment. In the process, completely by accident, they discovered an enormous peak for C60. This whole new world of chemistry was just about to appear. So this is a model of C60, or Buckminster Fullerene, and this was a molecule that was discovered at Rice University in 1985 by Harry Croter and colleagues. It's described as a beautiful molecule, and I think that's its appeal in a way. It seems to suit Harry because it had the visual appeal as well as the scientific thing. The most wonderful thing is that it was Blue Sky's research. He never set out to find the third form of carbon and, and help spark the whole area of nanoscience and nanotechnology. He was just pursuing his passion to understand carbon in interstellar space. Calling these set of molecules fullerenes came from Harry. He was very interested in art, he's very interested in architecture, and he realised that this was a beautiful symmetrical molecule. One image which was in my mind from way back, it was that of Buckminster Fuller's dome at Expo 67. I remember rushing into the office and there was this amazing message on the answer machine. I am Carl Jacobson from the Royal Swedish Academy of Scientists. And I have the good news to give you that you just have been awarded the 1996 Nobel Prize in Chemistry, jointly with uh, Professor Robert Curl and Professor Richard Smallleaf, of course, for your discovery of fullerenes. And then the telephones didn't stop ringing, the TV crews didn't stop coming around. It was just like this incredible energy. There was just an explosion of joy and happiness. Everyone was just running around, shouting down the corridors. Harry's got the Nobel Prize! He was obviously very excited about it, but he was also equally excited about the fact that it was going to be called Buckminster Fullerene, and he said he would fight for it because he knew that nobody else liked it. I opened my son's chemistry GCSE book, went to the section on carbon, graphite, diamond, and now the fullerene, C60. So at that point, I realized the reach of Harry's work was so immense that the textbooks had been rewritten. It's obviously opened up a whole new plethora of science. There's a whole division of chemistry, nanotechnology, material science. It's opened up so many angles. We've still got that fullerene chemistry going on here at Sussex, following in Harry's footsteps. Astrochemistry, we've got people working on titanium dioxide nanotubes. We've got people using nanotube polymer composites. 
winning the Nobel Prize for his discovery of C60 really did make a big difference to Sussex's global reputation. Students still talk about his legacy and they're taught about it at Sussex. He had a real mission to take science out from beyond the walls of the lab and the university and engage children, young people, old people with his passion for science. And that legacy lives on at Sussex today. For me, science is something to do with fun and solving puzzles where I really don't know what the answer is.